Hello, my wonderful friends. It's time once again for another story. Uh, I'm actually a little worried about this one. Uh, this is a this is a name that's definitely catching my attention, and I'm <laughs> I'm curious. I must know more. You guys know me. I love a good trash fire, and what makes this even better is that our wonderful Reddit user today is trash of a dumpster fire. After my own heart, are you? <laughs> This is Yandere Dumpster Fire, the worst anime adaptation of all time. I have so many questions. Hey, Moonhorse. Hello. I occasionally tune into your channel to listen to some of the crazy stories you read from here, and I finally decided I want to share some of my own. Well, I'm glad you did. I'm using a bit of a throwaway account, which will be used to relay the tales of my life. The first tale is the mind-boggling and face-palm-inducing fable of an ongoing dumpster fire. Oh boy! And the closest I have come to interacting with a yandere. Out of all of my very unfortunate encounters with beards and incels alike, this one is the saddest, and also the most infuriating story I have in my arsenal. Oh. Oh, we're going there, are we? I'm... I'm prepared. Lead the way. Lead me, O oh Virgil, through this burning hellfire. I advise you all don your hazmat suits, because we are trudging through shoulder-deep nuclear glop. Before we go into the waste, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Trash. I originally come from a state in the Midwest. I've lived there for 22 years. I moved to the South with the rest of my family for a variety of reasons. As someone also from the South, I'm sorry. I was transferring campuses because my old campus closed. That's a whole other infuriating tale for another day. One of my parents got a promotion in their company, which resulted in their base of operations to relocate. And the lovely cold weather of the Midwest was taking a physical toll on my father, who had recently kicked the crap out of cancer. Well, that's good. I'm glad that he's... You know, got that out, and everything's better. Despite the new opportunities, new friends, and impossibly fantastic boyfriend, and maintaining contact with all of my old friends, the move took a massive toll on my mental health. Yeesh. A lot of my mental health stems from immense self-hatred. I blame myself for everything and anything because I was considered to be the annoying kid in school, and I always felt it was just best to shut up and not talk. Well, I'm glad that you decided to share your story with us, and if it helps, I think you're a wonderful person. And I'm a you know, magical space unicorn from the moon, so if I say you are, it has to be true. It's like a rule. It's the internet. You can check. There's like a book somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, let's keep going. Now let's begin our journey. Make sure your suits are completely zipped up tight, because we are going to immediately sink into this poison. I have a dear friend. We'll call him Terry, named after... Fatal Fury. I don't know what that is. We met around the time myself and my first serious partner broke up. We officially met after I unfortunately became acquainted with his roommate. A whole other tale of mind-boggling what-the-fuckery. We began to hang out a lot after a convention one year, where we found out that we shared a lot of common interests. He and I became friends with benefits, and we often hung out together to forget about the pain of real life and enjoy each other's company. I became close with his friends, who I will dub the Mutuals. Now we come to the introduction of Taipan, Terry's current relationship, and the spark that started the murder of many of my brain cells, the Mutuals brain cells, and the destruction of this innocent dumpster who really did not deserve this. I chose this name for her because she is a poisonous piece of garbage. Yes, that's harsh, but that's the best way I can describe her. This snake became Terry's new girlfriend, and she was initially very nice to me. I met her when I came to visit for a brief stint, and she was, again, very kind and very friendly. I'll admit, maybe it was a bad idea to keep in contact with Terry while he was in this relationship, but he was adamant that we continue to talk, no matter what relationship he ended up in. After I met Taipan and Terry, came the first very concerning sign. Taipan cheated on Terry with one of her co-workers. Oh, yeah, no, that's pretty bad. It was like being struck with a full liter of Pepsi traveling at the speed of sound. <laughs> you have a way with words. 
Apparently, I found out through our mutuals that Taipan has a history of sleeping around and cheating on her partners because it was her, quote, guilty pleasure, unquote. Fucking what? But even after that, somehow, Terry gave her another chance. Q come susser Todd in the third impact. I like you. Almost every other day, I would hear from Terry about his relationship with Taipan, which just baffled me. She's nearly 30 years old, while Terry and I are both in our early to mid 20s. She acts like the ooh woo crybaby in real life. Oh, God. Unironically, even. Oh, that just makes it even better, doesn't it? <laughs> Which, I don't even know how to process that. It feels like I committed seppuku writing that. That's okay, I died a little inside, too. We're, we're friends. It's alright. <laughs> She spends 99% of her day on social media, primarily Facebook. Ew. Starting unnecessary flame wars with people. They shared almost nothing in common. For example, Terry loves horror movies and games. She absolutely hates horror. Terry loves shows and animes with intrigue and interesting characters, while Taipan binged Izaki, a genre Terry absolutely despises due to the stale formula. And Moonhorse does not know what that means. Don't explain it in the comments, I'm not going to read it. They don't even like the same kind of music. Their sex life is highly unsatisfactory for both parties, according to Terry. Taipan can't last a minute, let alone 10 seconds, and Terry would be frustrated, unable to get off, and if he found alternative ways, she would go absolutely ballistic on him. Yeah, that's pretty unhealthy. That, that's a lot of bad, uh, bad shit right there, my friend. They got into fights every other day, or so it seemed, and I was often the person Terry would go to after these quarrels. She would get mad when Terry didn't want to stay with her and watch stuff that he didn't like, or if he wanted to go hang out with his other friends. She threw temper tantrums over him wanting to just hang out and talk with his other friends. Here's where I admittedly made a large mistake. I suggested to Terry that perhaps the both of them needed time apart, as I was afraid this was going to turn into the current situation. Turns out, I was not the first person to suggest that. The Mutuals had suggested it multiple times to get distance, with some saying to completely cut Taipan out of his life. According to Terry, Taipan had developed this incredibly unhealthy attachment to him. He was apparently the, quote, best partner she had ever had in bed and in general. And me being around, memeing around with him like normal friends would, triggered her to go full yandere. One day, Taipan told me that Terry thought of me as a burden, and knowing full well what my mental state was, I was devastated. Terry and I had a nasty fight, and then Terry came back wanting to patch things up with me. Why? I don't know. But I'm glad he did. Then a month or two later, Terry isn't answering any of my calls, and Taipan texts me that I am the worst person ever, and that I deserve everything bad that happens to me. Once again, as someone who has problems with self-loathing, I took that to heart. The same day, Terry went missing for three hours with his pistol, contemplating on ending his own life. Oh my god. Luckily, one of our mutual friends found him before he really decided to hurt himself. Terry really wanted this to work, have his cake and eat it, if you will. For some reason, he enjoyed having Taipan's company, but always wanted to talk to me because he connected with me the most. Turns out he actually had developed deeper feelings for me and never communicated these feelings to me or Taipan. Which, I'll admit, was something he should have stated outright to the both of us and might have also contributed to the current flooding sludge of this dumpster fire. He finally got some balls and moved out of Taipan's house and got his own apartment, but then took 15 steps backwards and gave Taipan the spare keys to his apartment. To this day, that drives me absolutely insane why he thought that was a good idea. But it seemed like he began to distance himself from Taipan, and everything seemed to return to normal. We talked practically every day, everything was good, and then Taipan came slithering back in full force, enraged that he was talking to me. Hmm. Things continued to spiral from there, to the point that Taipan was policing his own social media accounts. Oh boy. The two most recent breakdowns were caused by the most innocent of Twitter interactions between us. The first incident was Terry tagging me in a tweet to post my art. 
Taipan flipped her lid, bared her fangs, and came slithering out full force to Terry's place, apparently tossing and throwing a temper tantrum that made me fear that she was actually going to attack him. Oh my lord. Then came the most recent incident, the one that prompted me to write this story. Terry posted a silly picture of him cooking in a very dumb way. I had a good laugh and responded with a meme that said, Who told you this was okay? He liked the image, and we continued to goof around. And then here comes Taipan, bearing her fangs at me, completely unprovoked, responded with, I do, you stupid fucking cunt, just get out of our lives, LMFAO. Charming. She ended up deleting this message, probably because I screenshot it and sent it to Terry, which probably what started the fight. Plus, several of our mutuals saw it and were, like me, absolutely flabbergasted. This entire event practically ruined a rather solid week. Terry had told me multiple times that he told Taipan to give him space and leave him alone, only for her to come ungracefully crashing in and throwing temper tantrums. I had to tell the mutuals because I couldn't take it anymore. I'm at my wit's end, and I feel like this is my fault because I exist in his life. I want to be his friend and continue being his friend, and I just don't know what to do at this point. The mutuals agree that Taipan needs to be completely cut out of his life. She needs to get help, but absolutely refuses to, or she's just lazy. We constantly tell Terry that he needs to take the spare keys, change his locks, or get a new apartment and run for the hills. I don't know anymore. This toxic waste is really hard to swim in, and I feel helpless. As of this moment, this concludes my tale. I'm going to try to talk to Terry and hopefully sort this thing out. Or we drown in the burning sludge spewing from this dumpster fire. But for now, this is Trash, signing off. Oh boy. That is, uh, that is a hell of a tale, my friend. First off, you should know that everybody makes, you know, whatever little mistakes, but from what I can tell, you haven't really done anything that awful or anything that would make me or anyone else, I'm sure, think that you're some kind of a bad person. You're not. You're trying to interact with a friend, a friend that you... I don't really know your feelings exactly upon this friend, but it does seem like you're actually kind of growing closer. It seems like the problem here, to me, and, you know, this is just me, the problem, it seems to me, is that those two don't really know how to just deal with separation. It seems like they're attached because at first they may have had feelings for each other, and they may have been really strong. And after, you know, getting closer, getting more intimate, realizing they actually don't have nearly as much in common as they thought they did, that this is basically turning into a feeling of, I just don't want to be alone. Like, that is a problem in a lot of... I... more immature. I was gonna say younger, but not every young person does this. But more immature relationships. This realization that things simply are not working out with this person. That this person is just, you know, it's not the way to be. But fear of letting go, fear of being single, fear of losing this connection that you had with this person is the thing that causes them to like freeze up and not want to actually take that step or make that move. And yeah, that is a problem. It leads to really toxic, unhealthy relationships, which it sounds like what's going on here. Uh, he definitely is not, like, I guess, realizing or refusing to realize the level of really not cool behavior that Taipan is doing. That's super weird. Especially for someone who's, like, around my age. Like, at this point, you should be an adult. At this point, you should know better for a lot of things. Some people, however, don't. I will absolutely admit that. But, yeah, this is definitely a worrisome one. So, here's the part where I have to tell you the hardest part of advice. Uh, this is the part where, you know, you may not like your Uncle Moonhorse after this, and that's fine. I understand. If... Terry is still not willing to understand that this is not just causing problems for him, it's causing problems for everyone, then 
you're going to have to think about, you and your mutuals are going to have to think about what's best for you guys. You can, you know, that old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. This is kind of that. You're, you're giving this dude every ounce of understanding, compassion, and the repeated, repeated, repeated ways of being like, this is what's going on. This is a thing you kind of have to understand. And he's still holding on to this, which, you know, isn't exactly the best. So, I'm not saying you have to do it anytime soon. I'm not even saying you have to do it anytime this year. I'm saying that eventually you need to really think about this. Like, really kind of put this in a way that works for you. I've said this a bunch of times, but, you know, nobody else's mental health is your responsibility. You can help, but if they're not willing to actually make the change, they're not going to make the change. And that definitely applies here, too. I'm really sorry to hear that you're having to go through all this, man. I mean, that's, like, super not fair, and it's really fucked up. It, it hurts losing a friend like that. It hurts having to deal with that kind of shit. I've had neckbeard friends who I had to go through similar incidents, and, I mean, they were still my friend, so it did suck, but sometimes that's the way life be, homie. Just remember that you are loved, you are wanted, and you are wonderful. And that goes for all of you. You're all wonderful, wonderful people, and I love you so very, very much. So, you know, standard YouTube outro stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, Ko-Fi, merch store, whatever. And your own story if you want to send it in. Subreddit. All those links are down there. Take care of yourselves, everybody. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.